Bartley ready for Anaheim one. There is no race in this sport that is more anticipated than this. For me, it's, uh, you know, Garrett or Alex or any of these guys, like uh, we're all living our dreams through these guys. But at the end of the day, you know, people coach and, and try to help others get to the next level because they missed it somehow or they wish they could have done something better. So for us, this is like race day is our dream come true just as much as it is for the riders. This year, I really gave it a lot of thought and contemplation as to like, I don't really want to end my career having never at least tried the 450 class. You know, it was, it was definitely hard leaving just because you're on the team for nine years. And that's hard, you know, like all, you're, all you know is riding a Cowie. You're with the same team, same guys, and just kind of getting dropped. Like, so my mind still feels young and I enjoy doing it. I love the fucking competition. I love grinding every day. I love stroking out in the summertime. I, I want to keep going as long as possible. I'm, I'm still hungry like a rookie, but at the same page, I'm like, I have so much experience. I need to put in results. That's kind of where I'm at in my career. Like, I don't really have an option to be like, oh, I just want to be consistent top 10. I've been far from my family and friends for a while and I've raced here since 2010. So it's been, yeah, 11 years since I left. Not telling you you have to do it, but watch it. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for it, man. So we are less than a month away from Anaheim 1. The Club MX team, I think that they'll probably be stronger this year than they were last year. I was really impressed with Garrett Marchbanks. Uh, his speed, his composure on the bike was very impressive. Keep putting together <coughs> good solid days until he won. I am a champion guy this year in the West Coast, but a top five guy in outdoors. I don't think he's one that you want to play head games with because I think you'll probably lose every time. Marchbanks has that section dialed. Marchbanks hangs on. Gets his first career victory. Does it right here at Daytona on the biggest stage in the sport. I'm Garrett Marchbanks. I'm 20 years old. I'm from Colville, Utah, and I ride for Club MX Yamaha. Garrett Marchbanks is a championship contender this year. 100%, I believe that. I mean, we've seen in previous years, he won Daytona. He's gotten podiums. He got a podium last year. The only thing that was missing last year, I think, was just a little bit of the mental side. This year, I feel like you can just see it in his riding. He's let go of the past. He's moving on to the future. Second year with the team, he's the bike's better. He's better. And I think he's got the full package this year. You were like, I just kind of like crunched, I crunched my legs enough to where it just kind of like absorbed it. Yeah, from Utah. You know, there's not a lot of tracks out there. Um, tracks aren't groomed that often. Clubs just give me a good, consistent, you know, base. How I got into it was my dad. You know, he rode here and there, um, raced a couple races growing up, but he honestly didn't want me getting into the racing. Just riding for fun. Didn't want me to be on a bike until I was about 14, 15. He's won a race and he can win races. Like I believe that he's a championship guy for 2022, so. I mean, for this year's season, Man, honestly, the win motives, like main events, like that's that's been my goal ever since I turned pro. And, you know, I only accomplished it once at Daytona and had a couple podiums after that. Now this year, it should be on the box every main event. There should be no reason why I can't. I've been feeling really good this year. Just having all the same guys on and off the track helping us, it, it's honestly great. I think it's just taught me be consistent with my work. Don't over try things and Brandon's helped me a lot be a leader. You know, I struggled with that coming here. Being the top guy, you know, I always don't want to ride with all the guys. That was hard for me, you know. When I first got here, I always expected to be the best guy every day. And if someone was close to me or was a hair faster, I struggled with that and would shut down and just be like, I don't want to ride with anyone. Screw, screw that, I don't want to ride. Brandon was like, dude, you gotta shut your ego off. I didn't really realize that until I'd say middle of this year. So coming into the new offseason, had a different mindset with it, so that's definitely helped.
we've talked to some other people that train here. We've heard a couple times that you've been a little bit of a hothead. Is that true or explain some of that? Oh, I'm definitely a hothead. Yeah, when it comes to riding on the bike or off the bike train, I, honestly anything. But, you know, if you're on my bad side, I'm gonna make it miserable for you. In three years, I wanna be a 250 Lights champion and into the 450, just battling with those guys like Tomac or Fernandez, whoever's in that class at the time. Honestly, just going for wins in the 450 class by year three. Ah, Troll Daddy. He's been around forever. He's been a student of the game. He knows what he needs to do. He doesn't need yelled at. He doesn't need boosted. Like, he knows his job. First time for Alex. This is a totally new deal. Rookie year in the 450 class. How do you think Alex is going to do on the big bike? Watching Alex Martin on the 450 was definitely uh, interesting. Alex is... Uh... Alex is more unique, honestly. He's uh, very competitive, but in a different approach than, than the other guys. Um, it's kind of deceiving because he's probably the nicest guy you'll ever meet off the bike. Um, truly wants what's good in everybody. He doesn't want to see anybody fail. He, he's happy for others' success. So Alex is like super great, but then when he puts his helmet on, it's like he wants it bad. He wants it more than he can describe it. He wants it more than he can show it. Um, but because he's so humble, you'll kind of, he'll catch you off guard. Alex Martin comes from a family of winners, being brothers with Jeremy Martin, who's an absolute beast, won multiple championships. Do you see Alex getting on a strong run and getting a couple podiums and winning a race? I think for him, getting him comfortable on the 450 is going to be our biggest goal for him to, if we can get him to that point, he'll take the rest on his own. I'm Alex Martin, I'm 32 years old from Millville, Minnesota, and I ride for the Club of Max FXR Yamaha. I'm a comeback team. Yeah, so kind of it's kind of weird to think of it as being my rookie year. I'm going into my 14th professional season. <laughs> um, you know, more or less just with my stature and my size, like the 250 thing was just easier for me. Um, easier to get a job, collect a paycheck, as well as just the bike size kind of fit my style a little bit more. <laughs> This year I really gave it a lot of thought and contemplation as to like, I don't really want to end my career having never at least tried the 450 class. You know, I've been in championship battles with guys and then watch them go on to the 450 and have success. So I at least wanted to give it a shot. So it was really cool that Club of Mex and Brandon reached out to me about this opportunity. Um, so grateful for that. Um, expectation wise for me is, um, being that it is my rookie year, um, just to just to learn. And 17 rounds of Supercross is no joke, no matter how you slice it. So I just want to get my feet wet, get some experience, being there every weekend, stay healthy. Um, I do feel like I can be in the top 10 if everything's clicking, get a whole shot, stay up front. Um, so expectation-wise, you know, I'd like to see myself near the top 10 and just be healthy for 17 rounds. Um, is this supposed to be like professional or what? You know, Phil's a very unique individual. He's an absolute prick. I'm over this shit. He's known as like the funny, you know, kind of talk shit kind of guy, but I feel like that's part of him being very mentally strong. Uh, On the other track, dog. Oh, I thought you were saying he did it again today. No. I'm sorry. Fuck. He's always busting my balls. I mean, all the time. Like he's he's such an like an up and down roller coaster when it comes to like he's happy and then he's pissed at me. Phil Nicoletti uh, from Bethel, New York, and I'm 30. Two, gonna be 33, fuck me, old, <laughs> that's depressing. I don't think it's out of the question for Phil to knock out a, a top three or a top five. Three to five guy, so that's, uh, that's the goal. Uh, so I've been a part of the club DLG since 2010. Um, came here and it was nothing, it was just sand pits, you know? It's slowly grown over the years, and now it's like 12 years kind of being here. So back in the day from when we were doing Supercross, we only had one Supercross track, and it was jank as fuck. But now it's like we have four Supercross tracks, and they're all to spec, and we got 15 guys doing the program. And it's actually, it's pretty badass. A lot of different people from different countries and personalities, so everyone gels well for the most part. A couple of arguments here and there, but um, yeah, club style. I, wouldn't really want to go anywhere else. So there's a bit of me, in, you know, a piece of me inside that still wanted to race Soupy, 
um, but I really don't want to do it on a Yamaha 450. Um, I kind of want to do 250 class uh, since the Yamaha is so good. I'd like to get one Supercross podium before it's all said and done. Um, I'm 32, going to be 33 in March, so when I practice and I'm at a training facility here with the kids, I mean, it's, uh, it makes me feel young. Body feels old as shit. Mentally, I still feel like I'm 18, so some of my mind still feels young and I enjoy doing it. I love the fucking competition. I love grinding every day. I love stroking out in the summertime. Uh, I want to keep going as long as possible. I think with Phil, it's not really an age thing. I think he's fine on, the, on in that aspect. Dropping down to the 250, I think, is a good thing for him because it's something new. Um, but, I mean, we'll see. Dominique Turry. I personally don't know much about uh, Dominique Turry. I've heard the kid grinds. I heard he's a hard worker. I know that he's not a young guy, but his mentality is young and hungry. Pisses me off at times. I hit him all the time my first week. Hearing my respect, he gave it back to me a couple times, and I don't know, he's a good dude. He just irritates me here and there. I don't think he realizes it. <laughs> Garrett is a special character. <laughs> Nowadays, we get along. Uh, it started off a little rough. He's got that, you know, like that typical German mentality, which is, you know, hard worker. Nick Thury is, uh, you know, one of the guys I'd say he's willing to sacrifice everything. You gotta encourage him to believe in himself a little bit more. Encourage him to, hey, you can do that three out of a corner. He doubts himself a little bit on the backside, but when he's willing to sacrifice everything, it's easy to support him along the way. I'm Dominic Thury, 29 years old and I'm um, from Germany. I ride for Club MX, FXR, I'm a comeback, Mark of Yamaha Racing Team. So I grew up in a small town in the east part of Germany, started racing by the age of four, went all over Germany, then traveled through Europe and uh, 2019 I decided to go to America for first time on the 450 and uh, then I decided 2021 to go all in, pack all my stuff in Germany and uh, found a home here in Chesterfield downtown <laughs> and uh, yeah, been here at Club MX ever since. There is no excuse that's hands down the best place to really get get ready for, for the season and come out with my best self. I want to be permanent in the top 10. I'm already 29, I, I have to say I really don't feel like that at all. I feel like I'm still hungry like a rookie, but at the same page, I'm like, I have so much experience. I'm basically racing Supercross since I'm 14 years old on a 250, and I think that's a, that's a good mix, and uh, my body feels fresh. I'm, I'm feeling good mentally, and just keep on going. Let's talk about Jace Owen a little bit. Jace has been hurt for the last year. He's coming back into the Club MX program, not totally healthy, but he is coming back hungry. Jace is a wild card, man. I felt like last year he was really riding good in the off season, but we had a bad Orlando and he tore his ACL on the practice track. He had the whole package going. He got hurt. My name is Jace Owen. I'm 27 years old from Mattoon, Illinois. It's early on, but he's doing East Coast so he's got time to prepare. I definitely see Jace getting back to what he was at last year or better. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so for the 2022 season, I'm definitely looking forward to like being a contender, honestly. I'm 27 years old now, so my window is getting smaller and smaller, and I've got a great opportunity riding for the Club MX guys. So really, I just, I, I need to put in results. That's kind of where I'm at in my career. Like, I don't really have an option to be like, oh, I just want to be consistent top 10. Like, of course, another main goal is for me to stay healthy. Like, my last four years, I've been hurt a lot. So for the last year, uh, pretty much doing physical therapy, getting over some injuries. I had a really good off season, like heading into the 21 season. And uh, I raced Orlando, struggled a little bit, still got top 10. And then um, the next polling Tuesday, I was at club practicing, tore my ACL. And I was like, man, I put in a lot of, lot of time this off season. So it's worth at least like giving it a shot. I took Daytona off, we had three Atlanta rounds and then at the last Atlanta round like I was just going through a rhythm section nothing even happened and then like my ankle gave out and I was like no way like did I really just break my ankle but here we are um, had surgery on my ankle in August and you know now here we are in December and uh, I've been back on a bike for a week now I have like four or five days so it's definitely like a little bit rusty but I'm just stoked to be back on a bike. He's naturally uh, got crazy intensity on the bike. When uh, Jace throws a heat lap down, it's like, it's a lap you wanted to watch and it almost takes the breath out of you. I believe Jace is a top five guy. He's a phenomenal starter. Whole shot at the first race of the year in Orlando for us last year. I think when Jace gets a taste of it at the premier level, just like he did throughout his amateur career, he did it through his arena cross career. When he gets a taste of it, he's hard to stop. Dude, Jace is a got to be one of the best riding partners I've had. The amount of knowledge he's given me and just helped me out, he didn't have to. Yeah, he's a good dude all and off track. If he can get inside that top five one time, I think it's game on for Jay Owen. I honestly feel like I'm in a better position now than what I was, you know, leading into 2021. I think Jay Owen's going to have a really good year. Jace has the whole package. He just needs to taste blood a little bit to know that he's worthy of being that top guy, being on the podium. Absolutely, I believe that. Damn, I hope to see him on the podium consistently, dude. That would be, that'd be so sick. He's one of the coolest dudes I know. Enzo Lopes. I've personally heard that Enzo's been ripping lately, but I've also heard that Enzo's had some bad luck lately and he's been crashing a lot. Enzo Lopes, he's been hurt, so you, didn't, you guys didn't get to see him ride. I think he's gonna have a good season. He's been on a really, a string of bad luck, but Enzo's got a pretty strong head on his shoulders and. I'm pretty sure some of his best rides at the end of the season, he was actually hurt because the one round he dislocated his shoulder and I think he got a fifth or something. He's a strong ass kid. He's tough as shit. I'm excited to see him this season. Kind of fun, you know, just a small kid growing up in Brazil. Never thought that would be possible, but my expectation is to uh, contend for podiums and uh, be more uh, consistently in the top five. And uh, I know what I'm capable of. Just gotta stay healthy throughout the season. I've been far from my family and friends for a while now. I've raced here since 2010, so it's been yeah, 11 years since I left. Not being able to be home for a long period of time. So yeah, that's been the big struggle, but uh, I know it, at the end it, it'll all pay off and uh, hopefully I can leave a legacy. Brands helped me a lot. To come back and see what they've built, the, the tracks, how they've expanded, it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. He's really good about being a team owner, but he's also still my on-the-bike trainer as well. If you could just pick up on his entrance speed would be... Yeah. You're not even matching him, just pick up on a little bit of it. My name is Brandon Haas. I'm 34 years old from Minnesota. Been living in Chesterfield, South Carolina for 10 years and I own and operate Club MX and the professional race team. I did the normal school routine, so I never really got to train and, and participate at that level, but I got enough taste of it to know that um, moto is definitely my passion. It's pretty insane when you see the, the injuries that they tolerate and the abuse they put their bodies through, the, the grind of Supercross going into motocross. You know, for me to to work hard and kind of take the team to the next level, it seems a bit easier because every day you see the, I guess, what they're willing to put on the line. You know, people coach and, and try to help others get to the next level because they missed it somehow or they wish they could have done something better. So for us, this is like race day is our dream come true just as much as it is for the rider. So, you know, to get on the box or maybe someday win a race, like 
it's cool for the team, it's cool for the pride that they take in it, it's cool for the group of guys that are involved in the moment and the atmosphere and kind of everybody coming together as one for me, that's, that's what it's about. I think for us it's more the goals you're going to learn along the way, like um, the life lessons you're going to learn along the way. Our goals for the Pro Supercross team is to be in the contentions for the championship with March Banks. Um, obviously we got a strong team, you know, Garrett is a title guy. We've got a lot invested in them for what a little team we are. We felt like we built a bike that can win. Um, we've shaved a lot of weight out of it. We found more power. Garrett's racecraft this year versus last year is hands down better. We've changed up our starts and got him on first gear and we've dialed it in. I think uh, last year having his first long year, you know, we should have finished. We got two races short, but he did get a lot of racing. I think he's setting up to be a championship guy. I don't care if we win it or lose it. I just want to be in contentions and be a player on the weekends. You know, for us it was about helping as many guys as we can win, but now the game's elevated. Like, we've got a taste of it on our side too, and, and we definitely want to win. So it is about helping these guys, it is about the support, but we are going there to win races. I'm Nick, I like to party. <laughs> what? That's it. So it's been plenty of injuries, I just gotta, you know, oh, do we can't, another one. Let's keep it fast. I'll never drop a red one. No way. <laughs> Yo! Woo! Woo!